What we saw in this flyover helped solve a mystery regarding the next Starship Tower, and SpaceX has started construction on yet another tower, but not for Starship. Hey everyone, this is Thomas Burkhardt from NASA Spaceflight. This week, myself, Steven, and Julia took to the skies over Cape Canaveral. Let's get into the details. But first, thanks to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. More on them later. Let's start first with the mystery that's been solved right at SpaceX's Roberts Road facility. What's going on there, Jack? Thanks, Thomas. Let's talk tower sections. With concrete having been poured on some sections, and nearly all sections and columns visible, we can now identify which sections are which. Tower sections 1 to 3 are located to the west, while tower sections 4 to 6 are located to the east. All of them have three levels, so in principle, they all look the same. Except that's not the case. There's subtle differences. The first tower section, the one at the bottom of the tower, has the resting point, or stop, for the chopsticks. Sections 4 and 5 are being fitted with concrete floors for the three levels that give access to the ship QD arm of the tower, with section 4 containing the bottom of three floors and section 5 containing the top two floors. Section 6 contains a beam on one of its sides that houses one of the pulleys for the carriage system. Sections 2 and 3 are the more generic sections of the tower. In the previous flyover, we mentioned it seemed like they might be missing some tower sections because they were already building a shorter tower section. The shorter tower sections are normally the top two, section 8 and 9, so seeing a shorter tower section already seemed to imply that there wasn't going to be a section 7. So is the tower going to be one section shorter? Nope, the sections are just rearranged. Tower section 7 is there, it's just that it's a shorter section. Instead of consisting of three levels like the other six sections, this one only has two. But columns nearby are of the same size as the ones that make up section 7. That means a new section with two levels will be built. But what if instead we put two and two together to make four? That's what's happening here. Tower section 7 is now two levels tall, and the next section will also be two levels tall. So both will still add up to four levels. But where is section 9? It's right there. Columns for section 9 were already spotted on the last flyover, and now they're accompanied by the central diagonal beam that's used to house a set of pulleys that help lift and lower the carriage system where the chopsticks are located. All that is left now is for SpaceX to start putting these together and see them take shape. The reason for this rearrangement of sections isn't clear, but it could just be related to the logistics of building the tower. You all probably know by now I love bacon, but it's not always the best for you. That's where Athletic Greens comes in. Their AG1 nutritional drink not only tastes great, but it's insanely easy to make. It also helps boost my energy, and it's not just a quick caffeine hit from coffee. That's thanks to 75 high quality, whole food sourced ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens, all carefully curated to nourish all the body systems holistically. When setting intentions, consistency is key. AG1 is an essential part of my routine because it's a daily habit, so it helps create consistency in my day. To be able to run around Starbase all day, which is quite a workout, I need to feel my best, and seven cups of coffee and a pound of bacon a day are just not going to cut it. AG1 fits seamlessly into my day. It is an essential routine that helps me start each day on the right path. And it's an effortless daily habit. Just one scoop and eight ounces of water every day, and that's it and it sure tastes great. AG1 solves two of your body's most important health needs, the nutrients you need each day, and it provides the foundation for long-term gut health. Also very important, it supports healthy skin and hair, which helps me keep this beard looking as good as it does. Head on over to athleticgreens.com slash NASA Spaceflight to get started on your order now. Athletic Greens is going to give NSF viewers a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Thanks once again to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. Moving on to the chopsticks construction area, a third set of chopsticks and their carriage is now under construction. This absolutely confirms that the third tower being built will have its set of chopsticks for stacking Starship vehicles. These chopsticks are the same length as the ones already installed at pad 39A. Many people have asked us in the past whether the chopsticks were shorter because they weren't catching at 39A, or the answer was already visible several months ago when the chopsticks for 39A were installed with hardware used only during catching, indicating that at some point they'll be used for such a thing. 
If there was any doubt about this, this third set of chopsticks confirms that this isn't just for catching, but an evolution on the design that we first saw at Boca Chica. They're shorter because they can be shorter. Remember what Elon says, the best part is no part? So it definitely seems without a trace of doubt that this is the case as well. In this same area, the ship QD, or quick disconnect, for 39A is still there. It's gotten a lot of plumbing and a lot of work, but no imminent sign of it rolling to the pad. To round out Roberts Road, let's move on to the Star Factory building. It seems nearly complete, with its southern section receiving a roof and walls. It appears that the factory has its main entrance and exit on the southeast wall, the one directly facing the future Florida Mega Bay. Speaking of the Mega Bay, construction on it still hasn't started. It's unclear why not, but this pause has been lasting now for several months. Back to you, Tommy boy. Thanks, Jack. We're always keeping a close eye on what SpaceX has been up to at Roberts Road, and we've got more on SpaceX later. But not far south from Roberts Road, there's another large rocket factory with some interesting developments, and we have Adrian to walk us through it. Moving over to Blue Origin, there has been a decent amount of construction work since our last flyover of the site. Before we dig into that, check out this piece of hardware we saw being moved outside of the warehouse. It appears to be about 7 meters wide, which is the diameter of New Glenn's tanks. Could this be some hardware for a New Glenn stage? The Reef Pathfinder building, where it's assumed early work on Orbital Reef will begin, now has a mostly complete structure. This is compared to the bare concrete slab we saw last month. Right next to it is the vertical assembly area. This structure has now reached its max height and gained a yellow bridge crane. A closer look at this bridge crane shows that it has a maximum load of 30 tons. Just north of the vertical assembly area, foundation work continues for the composite assembly building. This will eventually grow into another large addition to Blue's already impressive campus. At Blue Origin's Launch Complex 36, where New Glenn will launch from in the future, teams are still working on a large structure outside of the hangar. It's suspected that this is part of the transporter erector or another part of the launch system. At the north end of the launch complex are the five tents that seems to be home to the development of Project Jarvis. We are able to see at least one dome and one barrel section outside of the tents. This makes us wonder what other hardware is being worked on inside of the tents. Though there is one thing that can help us with that. Just next door at launch complex 12, the first Project Jarvis tank has a new friend. A smaller tank section is seen sitting at the pad. Maybe this is a prototype tank that was built in those tents we just talked about at Launch Complex 36. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on this area as we could see more hardware emerging from these tents soon. In the past few weeks there has been a large amount of activity at the launch and landing facility, or as any shuttle huggers will call it, the shuttle landing facility. Most of this work has been land clearing, which may not sound too exciting at first, but this paves way for more companies to construct facilities at Kennedy Space Center and help the spaceport grow even further. First, let's take a look at the clearing which will become home to Space Florida's mysterious Project Comet. All we know about Project Comet so far is that there will be a payload processing facility constructed on this site but the customer has yet to be named. This plot of land was formerly going to be used by Terran Orbital and turned into a satellite manufacturing campus. However, the company's plans changed and the land seemed to be quickly repurposed. We hope to hear more about the mysterious Project Comet from Space Florida in the near future. If one mysterious project wasn't enough, we have one more for you. Project Oz is another of Space Florida's large infrastructure projects and this week we were able to see the large area that is being prepared. But what will Project Oz be used for? According to a document from Space Florida, Project Oz will support the development of new facilities for spacecraft manufacturing and refurbishment at the launch and landing facility. Older planning documents from Space Florida show the addition of a new runway apron as well as a large hangar. Of course, it's highly likely that plans have changed since these were released, but it can still provide an idea of what the future of the launch and landing facility could look like. Now let's take a look at some of the other launch pads around the Space Force Station. At Relativity's Launch Complex 16, we were able to see Terran-1 standing vertical with the flare stack burning nearby. Terran-1 still needs to perform one final static fire test before its first ever launch attempt, and we'll be sharing any further updates from Relativity as they progress towards launch. At Space Launch Complex 37B, there is a Delta IV Heavy vertical in the Mobile Service Tower. United Launch Alliance is preparing the rocket ahead of the classified Enrol 68 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office, which will be the second to last launch of the Delta IV Heavy. The launch is expected to occur no earlier than March. 
And last, but certainly not least, we notice that there is some work going on at Launch Complex 20. This pad is leased by Firefly Airspace to launch its Alpha and Medium Launch Vehicle rockets, and it seems that the existing ramp is being torn down to make way for Firefly's infrastructure. Now, let's check back in on SpaceX at Space Launch Complex 40, and we're finally going to reveal what we teased the last flyover of the new construction work there. For that, let's send it over to Sawyer Rosenstein. Sawyer? Thanks, Thomas. Let's start at 39A, specifically the Starship Tower. We can see the chopsticks are finally installed. This came after they were joined to the carriage system prior to lift. Next up is the work to install the pulley system and connect the carriage to the power and hydraulic lines on the tower. When do you think Mechazilla will come to life at KSC? Let us know in the comments down below. The big crane at the pad is also being reconfigured. For what? That's the big question. But it's likely to be one of two things. First could be preparing it to lift the ship quick disconnect arm that should be complete based on what we've seen in these recent flyovers. However, before that happens, some of the scaffolding would have to be removed on the area of the tower where the QD would be installed. The other option is that it could be getting ready to lift the orbital launch mount table that's been under construction for the last year or so at Hangar M over at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. It's a very heavy piece too. For that to happen, they would have to lift the table sideways to avoid the chopsticks. Looking just to the left at the Falcon Pad at 39A, the top section of the strong back is being changed out. The current configuration is meant for launches with fairings. However, the next launch from 39A is the Crew-6 mission with the Dragon Capsule Endeavor, currently targeting late February. For comparison, you can even see the other top section just to the side. Let's swing over to Pad 40 on the Space Force side, where we're seeing major advancements. As we hinted at last flyover, SpaceX is working on a crew access tower. Over the last few weeks, SpaceX has cleared ground just to the west of the TE and are now driving piles into the ground to create the foundations for the second SpaceX crew tower at the Cape. Keep in mind, this is in between a record setting launch cadence, where just this past week, Slick 40 saw two launches in only five days. As we were flying by, we also saw B-1073 returning from the Amazonas Nexus mission after being offloaded from the drone ship. Speaking of drone ships, Port Canaveral is a bit empty, except for Dragon Recovery Ship Megan. Bob and Just Read the Instructions are heading out for the Inmar 6 F2 mission, while Doug and A Shortfall of Gravitas were returning from the Starlink 5-4 mission. And Shannon is in Charleston, South Carolina, likely for maintenance. Busy time at the Cape, Thomas, so I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Sawyer. Don't forget to get your free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free travel packs with your first purchase of Athletic Greens. Go to athleticgreens.com slash NASA Spaceflight to get started on your order. Here on the Space Coast, everyone seems to be gearing up for exciting launches really soon. From Starship to the Crew Tower at Slick 40, the debut of Terran 1, and now Firefly getting to work, we've got a lot to keep an eye on when we make our next flight. Until then, check out other videos and broadcasts here on the YouTube channel, listen to our podcast, or visit us at nasaspaceflight.com. I'm Thomas Burkhart, signing off. See you next time.